All right, so it is 12.26 p.m. Wednesday afternoon. And we got book reviews. So we're going to do The Art of Jock from 2016. So this is by the artist known as Jock. Very popular in the comic world and whatnot. The foreword by Peter Berg. Written by Will Dennis. Introduction by Jim Lee. Afterword by Scott Snyder. So this is a nice hardcover. This is the slipcover for it. And there's his John Hancock. And that's what that looks like. So, hop on your TV so you can enjoy this amazing book. It is... I think it's just under 200 pages. Yeah, it's just under 200. There we go. Perfect. I do like Jock's body of work. Like, it's really impressive. And... It's just super well good. So here's the table of contents. Now, yeah, under 160. So... Yeah. How did I get into Jock's work? I got into his work with um, the Batman Who Laughs, actually. So recently, I got into his work. And then this goes over his whole art career and everything. And how he works and his methods and all that shit. There is actually one piece of art in here I would totally steal. Straight out the books. Because it's that good and I like it that much. But I won't do it because I'm not that type of person. Oh, no, it's Judge Dredd. I do like Dread. Dread's one of my favorites. <clears throat> yeah, the way Jot captures style is just... It's nice to see different takes on different characters. Like, this POV right here is absolutely stunning. I've seen artists do reinventions of perspective, and I love that so much. Because you learn about perspective in art class. <laughs> like, art class taught you exactly how to do perspective drawing. That shit's challenging as hell, and I've seen so many people reinvent it. Whether it's, um... Let's see... Thing. Whether it's buildings or a car or um, a person's stance or just whatever, it's amazing to see how it's done. But a cityscape perspective, that is the best one. I like the losers. There's a lot of two page spreads in this, too. Like, the losers is a good flick, but mm, could have had more. And it's also DC, which surprised me. I didn't even know that. I like the haunting look of this. Oh, it's 
right, okay. Yeah, this book is interesting because it's got uh, the sheets and stuff for it. So this is the rough draft of what it is. There, that's the final version. That's some cool shit. I like that. There's a few of them in this book. And honestly, I've never... I might have read maybe one Green Arrow comic. I never really got fully into Green Arrow. But I do like the series. I never did finish that, though. But from where I left off, which was... I think season five, maybe? Yeah, I did enjoy it. What I own this book? Nah. I like it, but not enough to want to own it. Honestly. I do like the headdress here. Like that, it's just a rough headdress. Still beautiful. I've seen a detailed headdress before by uh, Mike Chrome, I think. That was really good. Most of the work in here that he's done, I have not read. So, yeah, there's a lot of shit I'm behind on. But his style is mesmerizing, dramatic, and etheric in different ways. Like, this is cool as shit. So that's a trailer park. With poker chips. That's invented. I like that. And of course, they mention what the covers are um, at the bottom of the page, in case you were wondering. And there's quotes as well. We got Batman. Joker. One thing about these pages I don't like is how it's just blank and then there's that at the bottom. Like, that's it. Like, like why do you have space like that? It's just so wasteful. Yeah, I've read a good chunk of Batman. Still behind on a lot of stuff. Gotta catch up on my favorite pedo eventually. <laughs> There's an easy way to catch up on his ass. Just go to Wikipedia. <laughs> and I've also done a character, I did the Batman character encyclopedia as well. And that's him. They need to do another one because he's got so much fucking backstory now. They need to do another book. That's a good one. This is nice. Because the, the tone of this harkens back to Batman Returns and. It's like an echo. It's like a combination of Tim Burton and Frank Miller. And I like that. Just by the tone and coloring. Yeah. That frame rolls up. <laughs> yeah, this is what I would steal out of this book. Why? <laughs> sure. Frank needs to work correctly. Come on. Fuck, there we go, okay. Laminated. 
rough draft. That's what I would totally steal out of this book. This book, it's so fucking cool. Catwoman. This is a nice book. There's not like, you know, most when I do a book review for other stuff, most of the time I'm having to, you know, go like that, and that, and that. Whereas it's just, you know, one. It's just back to back with pages. This makes it so easier to do. Daredevil is another one I haven't really read. But I hope you're enjoying this. I like this book. It's good. It's a damn good book. If you're inspired to want to try your hand at being an artist, this is definitely a good inspirational starting point for you. Or if you don't like Jock, well, that's alright too. Not everybody does. Some people have issues with artists over the dumbest shit. <laughs> they don't like them because they have differing political views, which is really fucking funny. <laughs> that's the biggest one that I always laugh at. They don't like the way they talk, eat, present themselves, dress. I don't know. <laughs> All kinds of shit. But if you don't have a problem with Jock, you'll enjoy this book. A lot. You really will. Yeah. You can see his whole career up to 2016. So if you were expecting the Batman who laughs in this, eh, you might have to wait a little while longer. You know, have posters. I think this section was my favorite. But I can't remember. the fuck I thought about it though. Hmm. Or maybe I'm thinking about Spit on Your Grave remake. I don't know. Dread was good shit. But I liked it unrated. This is pretty, yeah, I did like this one a lot. Of course, most of these, if you really want them that badly, just, you know, Google it. Get it that way. Find the site that's got it in 4K. Or go to Jock's site, he might have it for sale. Now, that's the thing we made, I don't care for that. I 
Ah, Pan's Labyrinth. That was a damn good film. The director's cut's the best. That's good perspective right there. <laughs> Depth perspective. Depth perception on it. Sit down. Alright. Zero Dark Thunder. This this is a very unique poster. That's what I like. Man. Hold on. There. Faggot. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's creative. I like how the people form the words. That's one of the most innovative posters I enjoy. Ah, yeah. uh, Cannibal Holocaust. Never saw this movie, but I know about the controversy of it. Batman Year One. Oh, this is cool. It's a good movie, too. Like Game of Thrones, Rough Draft, Final Version. Love Game of Thrones. Need to rewatch it. Another good movie. Highly enjoyed it. Another great flick. I like both films, but I definitely enjoyed the... Uh, I think I like the first one the most. I'm surprised he didn't do a poster for Old Boy. That would have been dope. Iron Man 3. Films. This is for Battleship. I liked Battleship, but it wasn't, like, spectacular. Or I should say it's spectacular, but not hardcore spectacular. I know a lot of people didn't like it. I don't remember that much. Oh my. Almost done. I think silhouette art is probably the best art, honestly.
Because you can do a lot with silhouette art. Because it's so simple. It's just, but it's a lot of black. So a lot of artists piss through black ink making a silhouette. Unless it's required for a different, unless they require a different color. But most of them are always black silhouettes. That's a pretty poster. I was surprised at how many projects he was attached to in this book. It really goes to show like he didn't stick to just one genre. He did a lot of genres. And that's it. It's the last page. So, I'll be back in a little bit with another book review. Well, the final book review for the book, because I only have one left. So, stay tuned.